Okay, so this is intermolecular forces. Uh, intermolecular forces are the forces which hold together simple covalent compounds. So all of your non-metal joined to a non-metal, that is except for boron, carbon and silicon, which of course are giant covalent compounds. And there are three different types of intermolecular forces which can exist. The first type we're going to talk about are permanent dipole-dipole forces. Now, for example, we can have hydrogen bonded to fluorine. Fluorine is a much more electronegative atom than hydrogen. Its electronegativity is much higher. Now, electronegativity is how well the atom can pull electrons towards itself. So because fluorine is more electronegative, it will pull the electrons in this bond away from hydrogen towards itself. So that means fluorine has got more of a share of electrons than hydrogen. It's like fluorine's the bully and hydrogen's the geeky nerd. It's getting its electrons stolen by fluorine. Now the charge of an electron is minus, so because fluorine's got more electrons around it than it should have, it gets a slight negative charge. Now the symbol for slight is, it's like a circle with a little wiggly line at the top. It's a, non-capital delta, and since this is slightly negative, we say slightly negative. Now because hydrogen has lost electrons, that's going to leave it with a slightly positive charge. Slightly positive. Now we call each of these things a dipole. So a molecule which has one more atom more electronegative than the other will have a polar bond. A polar bond means the electrons are unequally distributed and a polar bond leads to a dipole. Okay? Now, if I have another HF which approaches this molecule, this molecule will also have a permanent dipole. A dipole which is permanent, because these stay there, they don't get removed, these are always there. Now, opposite charges attract, so my slightly negative dipole will attract my slightly positive dipole. So we'll have a force between those holding them together. And that's what permanent dipole-dipole forces. So to recap, because one atom is more electronegative than the other, it will pull electrons towards itself. This will create a polar bond. A polar bond is a bond which has the electrons unequally shared. A polar bond leads to a molecule with a dipole. And a molecule with a dipole will have a permanent dipole, because these dipoles stay forever, they're there to stay. When one molecule with a permanent dipole approaches another molecule with a permanent dipole, the opposite charges, or slight charges, attract each other, and that's what holds them together. Okay, so that's permanent dipoles. They're moderately strong for an intermolecular force. Compared to other forces, like electrostatic forces or covalent bonds, things like that, all intermolecular forces are incredibly, incredibly weak. But for an intermolecular force, permanent dipole dipoles are fairly strong. What I'm going to talk about now is the intermolecular force, which is incredibly weak. It is the weakest force you'll learn about. It's, it's pathetic, basically. And these are called van der Waals forces. Sorry, it's a non-capital V, non-capital D, and then a capital W. These are van der Waals force. Sometimes you'll hear these called induced dipole-dipole forces. And they work like this. If I have a molecule or an atom, well, let's start with an atom, actually. The nucleus of an atom will be positive because it's got protons in there. They're the positive charge. Now, at any one time, you're going to have electrons whizzing around this atom at sometimes close to the speed of light. So I might have one electron here. I'm not going to draw them in their shells. I'm just going to draw them higgledy piggledy. Maybe another one there, another one here, another one there, another one there. So 99% of the time, these electrons will be roughly scattered equally around the atom. Now, this will give it no overall charge because we've got an equal distribution. But because these electrons are whizzing around all over the place, for a brief, tiniest moment, we might end up with more electrons to one side of the atom than on the other. 
Now, since electrons have got a negative charge, this is going to give this side of the atom a slightly, slightly negative charge. We say too slightly because it's incredibly small and it only lasts for the briefest instant of a microsecond, but it's really short lived. Now, because there's less electrons on this side, it's going to leave this side with a slightly, slightly positive charge. Okay, so that's in terms of atoms. We can also talk about this in terms of molecules as well.